हेलो वेलकम गुड आफ्टरनून हाय एवरीवन एवरीबॉडी हियर एवरीबॉडी हियर कैन यू हियर मी कैन यू सी मी जस्ट चेक योर ऑडियो वीडियो सेटिंग्स सेटल डाउन गेट योर पेन्स इन प्लेस गेट योर बुक इन प्लेस ओपन इट अप राइट माय नेम डर्मेटोलॉजी डर्मा व्हाट एवर यू वांट टू से राइट एवरीबॉडी yes so before at the outset let me just introduce myself before i begin and delve into dermatology now uh, when we know dermatology is is as a field which i am sure none of us know too much about when we finish our mbbs course there are some fields which are which are called as orphan fields orphan matlab unka koi you know koi khayal nahi rakhta unka orphan fields means in mbbs course i remember my orphan field was definitely dermatology maybe psychiatry I did not have even one sense of what happens in those subjects. I had some sense of medicine and surgery and PSM and biochemistry because that was taught properly. But when it come came to dermatology, it was just you know some lecture somewhere, maybe a posting somewhere which you never understood anything about. And in that, uh, in that in that time, what we know is uh, dermatology used to be na a game of some images. some picture of skin some atlas that we used to go through and at the end of all this whole hard work the treatment was just steroids and we were like what the heck you make such a big diagnosis in the end everybody is given steroids of different different brands maybe somebody was given anti fungal somebody was told about skb so it was a very weird experience in mbbs i'm sure i did not even value the magic of dermatology and you know i had zero respect for dermatology and then i got dermatology right and i'm like god you know what is this you know uh, so you know god has a way the upper god has a way of hearing you and what you most dislike sometimes is the one thing that you get but when i went into it i was so wrong dermatology is such a wonderful field it's such a beautiful field and i've always been joyous that whoever was there upstairs chose that field for me and i, I can never be having enough gratitude it was it was one of the best decisions of my life so i'll just explore dermatology i'll bring to you the magic of dermatology the beauty of dermatology so i just want you to be with me in letter and spirit and your heart and soul and just you'll really really enjoy what we do i'll tell you how we do this yes okay now uh bache this is the same bache we are doing uh the live class here uh the first <coughs> the first session the first session is is open to everyone so we are uh, and then after the first session it becomes a more private experience and only those who are with dbmci will get that access so right the first session is going to be free for all so it's going to be the live session which you can which you can see on youtube as well and obviously you can see it on your uh, other feeds as well right right ak is that answering your question bache Yes. I'm checking your other uh, stuff as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. So I I'm checking your questions on two portals, your Telegram group as well, and and I would prefer that you know because it's difficult to check two portals at one time. it's it's better that if all of you can at this in the first session at least you can type your questions only on the youtube portal and uh, later on when we do a more private session then you can then you'll have only a telegram uh, id on which to correspond with me on right yes cool all right chal <laughs> let's begin uh, let me give you a perspective on what we are going to do right now obviously the the really big stuff that we will do is dermatology right today we'll go on till about i believe between 9:30 9:15 to 9:30 pm okay that's going to be the closure time today okay the close time today today will be this much okay and then we we begin tomorrow at about 9 am okay and then we go on tomorrow okay till maybe about 7:30 or even 8ish that that let's see what time we depending on your permission as well 
ओके नो बच्चे इट इज नॉट द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द प्रीवियस मास्टर क्लास नॉट एट ऑल नो 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 दैट वॉज जस्ट अ टू आर सेशन लाइफ सो वी द फर्स्ट इंट्रोडक्शन सेशन वी आर वी आर डूइंग अगेन बट इन अ लॉट मोर डेप्थ देन वॉट वी अटेम्प्टेड लास्ट टाइम इट्स वॉन्ट बी अ लॉट मोर डीप इंट्रोडक्शन टॉपिक इट सेल्फ ओके इट्स नॉट अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द लास्ट मास्टर क्लास दैट वॉज जस्ट फॉर टू आर्स इज अगेन फॉर ओनली टू आर्स बट दैट्स अगेन द इंट्रोडक्शन ओनली बट इन अ लॉट मोर डेप्थ ओके right so this is and then we have uh, another session planned on tuesday okay uh, that starts at about 5 pm that's a tuesday class so we will be able to finish then in these three days so one day day one that's your day one tomorrow is your day two and this is like a small day three remaining depending on what how much portion we are yet to finish right <coughs> that's the first point i want you to do Uh, we will do about two to two and a half hour session. Each session will will be about two to two and a half hour, okay? And then you get a break of about fifteen minutes or so. Then the second session comes in. So that's how the 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 session is going to be planned. About fifteen minutes break in between, right? Okay. Now, so obviously we are going to do dermatolo dermatology. There's no doubt about that. There is something you will be really happy to know. uh in this entire class in this entire class i will also mix in something which is really something i love to talk about which is nutrition science because there's definitely an overlap between nutrition science and dermatology right now unfortunately in your mbbs course none of you are going to be taught about nutrition right the only time you are going to be taught about nutrition is when you talk about pellegra or berry berry or uh kwashiorkor or marasmus that's not how we look at nutrition nutrition is to give you a practical knowledge which helps you decide in the morning whether dosa is okay or idli is better whether masala dosa is better or plain dosa is better is ghee better or oil better which oil is the best can you have the yellow of the egg is brown bread better or white bread better is juice better or the intact fruit better is diet coke better or normal coke better so this is what is nutrition science and the reason i'm going to tell you all of that is not because i want you to be a dietitian but you will be fascinated with this new world that i will introduce you to and that is because i am very passionate about nutrition and i know this that so many diseases come through lack of knowledge about food you let that be atherosclerosis let that be fatty liver let that be strokes let that be diabetes all of them are ultimately food diseases and what medical science has unfortunately done is they, we are learning about diabetes but we are not, not not learning about food so then how does that really give you an understanding right so we are going to do that also as 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 time goes on okay now as and when i get time there's a third circle i always feel this is the biggest circle which nobody talks about okay and that is what i call as life skills okay what do you mean my life skill training now there's so many most of us uh, have a certain degree of intellect we are obviously doctors and we know that we are the cream of society we know we have our iq but you know so many times you you get up in the morning and you feel nonsense you feel lousy you don't feel like studying you don't feel like doing anything you feel like lying on the bed and some days are just so bad right and that happens with everyone now does your college does your school do your teachers equip you into handling this day the day where you don't feel like doing anything how do you handle what how do you handle this how do you handle the fact that some of your friends can be very rude to you how do you handle the fact that you feel bad right do you have any training how to handle those bad feelings what happens if something bad happens to you how do you get back up how do you motivate yourself is motivation even important or is discipline more important there are so many of these questions which i'm sure parents also don't discuss and teachers also don't discuss but i am going to discuss that because that's something again which is very close to my heart i will at the end of your course <clears throat> on tuesday you will be thrilled to know that i'll give you actual tools and how to master whatever you want to do for example you want to be a radiologist or you want to be a dermatologist is that pathway only through hard work not really you have to have a lot of mental control mental focus a lot of other mental skills which are not taught in classes but i'm going to teach that in the class itself so that's again is something so there are three circles i want to talk about i want to talk about dermatology i want to talk about nutrition i'm going to learn life skills so three big big circles and you'll be very happy to have them on your fingertips right so with this introduction 
Now, a little bit about me. I am Dr. Saurabh Jindal. I am a dermatologist. I finished my MD in the year 2005. This is when I finished my MD. So from 2005 to 2023 has been my dermatology. So it's been obviously what 18 years of dermatology. In those 18 years, 16 years have been as a PG entrance institute teacher. I went into PG training. Okay, I've been teaching students. Okay, for the last 16 years. So I know what I'm doing. So please stay with me and you will really find that you will be able to master dermatology through here. So with this and my best wishes along with that, let's start dermatology, right? Okay. So let's get into anatomy, which is Okay, now in anatomy, let's look at and I want you to now look at one one very some very very important stuff. Okay, there are going to be some slides. Listen carefully. Listen carefully on this. Okay, you will have to be fast in copying stuff down. Okay, don't be slow. You will have to be quick. Okay, uh, at the end of the course, at the end of the course, okay, on the telegram group that we have in DBMCI, okay, you will be given all the labeled images. So don't worry about that. You will be given all labeled images. Okay. So images will be given to you whatever I show in the class. So you don't have to give, be frantic about whatever images I'm showing you. Oh, how will I get it back again? All that don't worry. You will be given all that very easily. Clear? Okay. But whatever theory I write, I would request you to either jot it down. Or if you find there is some problem in your, your speed is not very good, then I would request you take another mobile phone. Take another mobile phone. And you can just take... A image of the screen through another phone okay because you might not be able to take screenshots so take another phone and maybe click whatever theory and you feel you are, you are slow you can't jot all this down quickly so I would request you take another phone and just click that so that you have that at your disposal and you can copy it up later on okay <coughs> Uh, Shristi, don't worry. You can, as a third and the fourth year student, you can, you are going to be very easily benefited. Okay, don't worry. You can even attend and I'll make sure that you also understand. It's not that only interns can understand. I will make sure that because I am a teacher like that, I'll be able to, even, even if you don't know any dermatology, even if you're zero, then you will still be able to understand easily. Okay, so anatomy. Now, there are three layers of skin. Let's be quick, bache. Huh? I want you to be quick. Okay, so no, no laxity. No slackness. I want you to be full of energy and I want you to be able to absorb everything quickly. Okay. The, the mantra of preparation is this. If you want to be good in PG preparation, this is outstandingly important. If you're going to be slow in learning, if you're going to be slow in writing, you will miss the bus. Trust me on this. It's a fast bus. You have to climb, climb on it. I'm going to train you for fast reading as well. Okay. Right. So three layers of skin. I'm going to draw that for you. Topmost is epidermis. Below that is the dermis. And this line in between is called the DEJ, which stands for dermoepidermal junction. Which stands for dermoepidermal junction. Okay, which stands for dermoepidermal junction. Got it? Which stands for dermoepidermal junction. Now, this dermoepidermal junction, can you see first of all, that it's an up and down line. Can you appreciate that? It's not a straight line. It's an up and down line. It is not. See, I did not draw like this. I did not draw like this straight line, right? I drew it as an up and down line. So why is it an up and down line? Let's understand that. Let's say you take your index finger and you try to push your skin. Let's say you, you take your index finger and you try to push your skin. Epidermis, dermis move together as a unit. You don't find epidermis moving on the dermis. Dermis doesn't move on the fat. It moves together, right? It moves together as a unit, right? So if I just take my finger and I push it, can you see it's kind of moving together, right? Epidermis, dermis move together, right? So that's good. Now let's assume that the dermoepidermal junction is a flat line. Left hand is the epidermis, right hand is the dermis, junction is a flat line. Now if junction is a flat line, is it not very, very easy for the sliding movement to happen? I said, I don't want that. I don't want this sliding movement to happen. So nature rejects this pattern and nature does what? It keeps the dermis like this with fingers going up and epidermis like this with fingers going down and the upper fingers go into the gaps of the lower fingers. Can you see now there is no chance of movement? 
right? It's got stuck into each other. The analogy that we give for this, and again, I'm a, I'm a, I know, I'm a very, very big believer in analogies. Analogies means real life situation which is compared to dermatology. So the analogy for the DJ is crocodile teeth. Did you get this analogy? Meaning what? How does a crocodile teeth do? It's going to be like this, right? Crocodile teeth goes like this, right? So that's why they get a grip. So a crocodile can hold on to prey and tear up prey because of that. Same way our dermoepidermal junction is also almost like crocodile teeth. Where the upper fingers, which is the stuff going down from the epidermis, then they go into something from below. So what is that? Now what goes down from the epidermis, this stuff is a part of the epidermis and that's called retiridge. And this is something here, this red stuff is called the dermal papilla. Alright, bache? You can definitely keep on asking me questions. Okay, I, you can definitely keep on asking me questions. But at this time, I would request even the registered students with DBMCI to ask the questions on the YouTube portal, right? Because that is the only place I'm looking at. I'm not going to the Telegram, so don't type your questions there. But from the next session on, you will have to just type your questions on the telegram group right okay so dermal papilla are these fingers going up and retiridge are something coming down the epidermis typically right down has four layers all of us have four epidermal layers mainly okay now especially the mcq right down the palm and the sole has five layers in the epidermis the extra layer is called stratum lucidum the extra layer is called stratum lucidum. That's only in the palm and the sole. That's only in the palm and the sole. That's only in the palm and the sole. Got it? Very good question. You don't need more than two colors for sure. Harshwadhan has a very good question. And I am a fan of this question. You know why? Because I know when I do my classes, half of you are with like a dozen pens. I saw a girl that day, she actually bought like that, you know, we used to buy that in childhood. Those crayons and those pencil colors. I'm like, what are you going to do with 25 pencil colors? Because half of our time goes in choosing which color to pick up. I said, Baba, don't, you're not making a Picasso painting, Baba. You just need two colors, that's it. I don't get many colors. We can use more colors later on, right? So let's be more of a monochrome rather than a polychrome. So just, just one or two maximum colors, right? Okay. Now what are the four layers? The top layer is called stratum corneum. Right? Stratum corneum is the top layer. The topmost layer of the epidermis. We are talking about the epidermis right now. Okay. Top layer is the Corneum. In this, the word stratum basically means layer. The word the word corneum means keratin. I am again a very big fan of cutting words. So I am a big fan of two things I told you. One is analogies, which I will give a lot. Second is cut words. Whenever we cut words, we get extra information and a lot of MCQs are hidden in the, in the, in the cutting of the words only. So keratin layer meaning and you get an MCQ on this. Stratum corneum is the layer with maximum keratin. You get that MCQ? And how do you remember this? Obviously keratin. The main meaning corneum means keratin, right? So it's got the maximum keratin. Why does it need keratin? Remember, keratin is for strength. Okay, what do you mean by strength? Why do you need strength? Now see, I'm holding a pen. Can you see how much pressure comes on that holding point? The touch point has the maximum pressure. So what happens? The corneum is the most exposed to trauma of the pen. I put a bag on my shoulder. My daughter goes to school with like maybe I think a hundred kilo bag. I definitely think that you know, she's going to the gym rather than school because her bags are so bloody heavy. And she's almost, I'm saying, do you do a dumbbell there? Seriously, today's kids' kids' bags are really, really heavy, right? So she puts a bag on the shoulder. Is that not trauma on that area? Are you with me on this? I'm putting an elbow on the table. Is that not pressure on the elbow? I'm sitting. Is that not pressure on the skin of my butt? I'm walking. I'm, I'm running. I'm jumping. Whatever we do in life, we're hitting epidemics with forces. And that is going to be 
न्यूट्रलाइज्ड बाय अ वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग कॉर्नियम एंड व्हाट गिव्स टेंड टू द कॉर्नियम कैरेटिन गॉट दिस या ओके नाउ नेक्स्ट बिलो दैट इज स्ट्रेटम ग्रैनुलोजम शॉर्ट टर्म इज एस जी इन दिस दर्ड ग्रैनुलोजम मीन्स इट इज गॉट अ ग्रैन्यूल इन which has been called as keratohyaline granule it has been called as keratohyaline granule it has been called as keratohyaline granule so this layer this is a cell okay now this cell has these granules which we can call as keratohyaline granules theek hai <coughs> now sg write down mcq now We'll do NC MCQ here. SG is absent in the disease psoriasis. In the word psoriasis, P is silent, and this layer is thick. So we call that thick layer as hypergranulosis, meaning thick layer of granular layer that is seen in the disease lichen planus. So two MCQs here. Short form is LP, lichen planus. Okay, we'll talk about this later on. We'll talk about why this happens, why the granular layer is absent in psoriasis and thickened in LP. That we will speak about later on. At the moment, we're not telling you why, but we are just telling you the fact. Okay. All right. Below that is the stratum spinosum SS. Short form is. ss stratum spinosum the word spinosum means the cell has some projections <coughs> around it so these are spine like projections these spine spine like projections are technically structures called as desmosomes and now we can say desmosomes are maximum In the stratum spinosum, did you see this MCQ? So easy, na? This is an MCQ again. I'll keep on telling you the MCQs. Okay. Now, why is that? Now, because spine, spinous is desmosome. Simple, clear. <coughs> why do you need a spine? I mean, why should there be a spine? Clear. Easy to understand one thing. Again, one more analogy coming up. Hmm. the second analogy the first analogy that we spoke about was the crocodile analogy right the second analogy now we speak about the analogy for a desmosome is desmosome is like a suture is like a suture and hence joins epidermal cells together Let's see this now. What I mean, I'm going to explain everything step by step. Okay. Now see what do you mean by that. Now let's say this is one cell. Okay, and this is one more cell in the epidermis. Now would you realize that you cannot afford a gap in between epidermal cells? Why should there be no gap? Now, if there was a gap, now environment has a lot of microbes, and the microbes would easily be able to come inside through this particular gap, and you would be dead. Simple, right? You don't because environment has billions of microbes, right? Environment has COVID, right? Now it's COVID is coming back. It seems so. Whatever it might have a lot of organisms which come inside, and now. your skin is all the time exposed to the air around which has hundred and billions of things it's got organism it's got pollution it's got dust it's got smog it's got everything fortunately there is no gap in between epidermal cells otherwise everything would come inside so see what happens now see what happens now okay now you will find that between epidermal cells this is your desmosome Can you see now? Desmosome is a stitch or a suture which joins cells together, so there is no gap, and that's why you don't find and the microbes will actually come go back. Microbes would never come in. Are you with me on this? And that is why you can avoid infections because your cells are connected to each other. Clear? That is why desmosomes are now easily now understood. Why desmosomes are called as 
इंटर सेल्युलर जंक्शंस डेस्मोजोम्स आर कॉल्ड एज इंटर सेल्युलर जंक्शंस इंटर सेल्युलर एंड जंक्शन कैन यू गेट दिस वर्ड इंटर सेल्युलर एंड जंक्शंस इंटर सेल्युलर जंक्शंस Did you see this, please? Everybody got this clearly? Let me show you what these really look like then. Let me show you what a desmosome looks like. Can you appreciate the desmosome now? Can you appreciate there is a fibrous structure, a fibrous strand, which is going from one cell to the other, and this is that suture material we are speaking about. At the moment, you are kind of looking at a gap, okay? There is some white space, a gap, but as the suture tightens itself, the two cells will really join and then you would not see any gap between the epidermal cells and in fact that is what desmosomes do. Clear? Got it? Now desmosome typically calcium dependent. It needs calcium for its function. We'll use this concept a bit later on. In one of the diseases, desmosomes are calcium dependent. Desmosomes are calcium dependent. Yes, okay. Below that is the stratum basal layer, SB. As the name says, the basal layer. Yeah, basal layer. It is also called as a germinative layer because it germinates. It gives you the other layers. So that's the four epidermal layers we know. Clear? Everybody good with this? Okay, now, all the four epidermal layers, all the four epidermal layers, uh, Shristi Bache, we'll talk about the gap a bit later on, don't worry about the gap part of it, I'll explain the gap a bit later on, okay, why that gap was seen in that image, but at the moment we can ignore that stuff, what I'm trying to say is, that the desmosomes I wanted to show you, that is going to be seen in that, in that sense, and as the uh, desmosomes tighten itself, then the two cells will come close together. Now, all four epidermal layers are joined to each other. Okay, joined to each other. So that means if I have this is the stratum corneum, immediately below that is the stratum granulosum, immediately below that is the stratum spinosum, and immediately below that is the stratum basale. So, all the four layers are joined to each other. There is no gap in between the epidermal layers. Okay. Why would there be no gap? Easy to understand. Let's look at the third analogy. I'll keep on numbering these analogies so you would know. The analogy is, let's look at printer papers. So, analogy you want to look at is a printer paper analogy. What is a printer paper analogy? Okay. For this situation. So let me show you the printer papers first because then I'll bring up that analogy to you. Okay. Now when you buy any box of printer papers, all of them are like joined to each other and then you put them as a, as a unit into that printer stuff and then you give a print command. Obviously the entire bunch runs together inside, right? Each paper is not moving, they run together, right? Same way, the four epidermal layers are stuck to each other like these printer papers. So that's why when I push with my finger like this, when I push on the top, all the four layers will move together, no? All the four layers will move together. Clear? And that's a good thing. All the four epidermal layers should move together. That's, that's how it's supposed to be. Clear? Now see what happens. There's a disease, write down please, called as pemphigus. Pemphigus is a disease where there is an epidermal separation. Why it is separation? That I'll tell you. Later on, that I'll tell you. Okay? There are two types of pemphigus. Pemphigus foliaceous and pemphigus vulgaris. So, PF and PV. PF and PV. In PF, what happens? See what I'm going to draw. The stratum corneum layer has been split off and the three layers below are together now. You get that? Yes. Whereas in vulgaris, the three layers continue to be together and a basal layer has been cut off. <coughs> huh? 
हर्षवर्धन आई डेंट अंडरस्टैंड योर क्वेश्चन इज इट फोर और थ्री मीन्स वॉट सृष्टि आई विल एक्सप्लेन द प्रिंटर पेपर एनालॉजी अगेन ओके ओके आई डू दैट अगेन लेट मी गो बैक टू द प्रिंटर पेपर एनालॉजी सृष्टि लुक एट दिस सो लेट्स अज यू माइल गिव यू वन मोर वे ऑफ एक्सप्लेनिंग दिस लेट्स ए दिस फोर फिंगर्स दैट आई हैव दीज फोर फिंगर्स आर द फोर लेयर्स ऑफ एपिडम स्टेटम कॉर्नियम स्टेटम गैनलिज्म स्टेटम स्पाइनिज्म स्टेटम बेजाले All four layers are stuck to each other like this, right? Think of them as printer papers. So, if you buy a box of printer papers, like it comes in like boxes of fifty and hundred papers, but all of them are kind of joined to each other. So, when you put that in a printer setting and you give a print command, all the printer, all the pages will move together, no? Because they are they are together. Same way, like four fingers like this. So, when I push on the top corneum, all the four layers will move together, no? Because they are going to be stuck. and that's when i do this all the four layers are moving together that's normal that's how it's supposed to be right and if it was there this is good it's supposed to move together and i told you now it's good for uh, the epidermis and the dermis and everything to move together clear got i'm what i'm saying right now what happens in pemphigus unfortunately is can you see the separation part let's see pemphigus foliaceus pemphigus foliaceus here pemphigus foliaceus pf is a disease where the upper paper has separated Malad, the stratum corner separated means what? See this again, the the finger analogy. I am just kind of in, increasing the distance between the corneum and the granulosa. Can you see there's a gap? Is that not an epidermal separation? Got it, Masai? Clear? Now look at vulgaris now. Pemphigus vulgaris has another situation where there are three papers above and the bottom will paper has separated. Do you get that? What is Pemphigus vulgaris? Did you see the analogy which I? And now let me give you this easy understanding now. For what is the pemphigus in a printer paper kind of a analogy? I told you this is normal. I told you this is normal. Can you see now? This is pemphigus vulgaris. Do you see that? What I'm saying? So there is maybe stratum corneum, stratum gallosum, stratum spinosum together, and a stratum basale below. So can you see a separation? Can you see a separation? Can you see a separation between the three layers and the bottom? Are you with me on this? Is this not pemphigus vulgaris? Is this not pemphigus vulgaris? Clear? Okay. Now see this. Now you get this. Now whenever there's a gap, is that is that not a gap? Is that not a gap below the corneum? And that gap is always going to be filled up with water. And that's a universal concept in dermatology. Any time you have a gap, you fill it up with fluid. So in pemphigus foliaceus, there's a fluid collection below the corneum. Right? so can i not call this easily as a subcorneal blister is everybody getting this subcorneal blister whereas in vulgaris the fluid tends to be here right so is this not a supra basal blister everybody got this yeah supra basal blister so now we understand there are two types of pemphigus depending on where the split happens if the split is below the corneum subcorneal if the split is above the basal supra basal clear okay now see this now see something beautiful now on this now so let's say i'm talking about pemphigus foliaceus okay let let me just stand up okay like this it is not pemphigus foliaceus clear now take let's say i take my finger now and try to push now Okay, on the top layer. Do you realize that only the corneum will move? The bottom layers don't move only, no? Because bottom layers are not connected. So only the corneum moves. So when the corneum moves, the corneum is just going to be thrown off, and you will have a raw area to see. We do the same thing in pemphigus vulgaris, for example. Three layers above and bottom layer below. I push on the top. The top three layers will move. Will move. Bottom doesn't move only. So again, the top three layers will fall off. And the bottom is not moving alongside, so again I get a raw area, like a wound. Are you with me on this? Because layers are not moving together, layers are moving independently, which I can actually show you first before I, and I I have a good video to show you. Now listen to this. Okay, now so this is see what I'm trying to do. I have my glove finger here, and I'm trying to push the skin. Right now, if I if it was normal skin, nothing would happen. The skin would move easily. But look at what happens. Let's assume it's a pemphigus patient. 
right? So layers will not move together. Layers will not move together. Now see this now. Can you appreciate what's happened? Can you appreciate what's happened? Can you see there is a wound creation? Because the top layer has moved. Bottom has not moved only. Are you with me on this? This is going to be positive both in pemphigus foliaceous and pemphigus vulgaris. In foliaceous only the corneum moves. But in vulgaris the upper three layers move. This sign where you have movement between epidermal layers and you have a raw area like this when you push with your finger. This sign has been called as Nikolsky sign. This has been called as Nikolsky sign. And I want you to write that now. One second please. I want you to write that. Please copy this. Please copy, Bache. Please copy the Nikolsky sign concept. I hope everybody is understanding what we are trying to do here. I hope everybody is understanding what we are trying to do here. Shishti, Bache, got it? Shishti? I'll only be able to call out to people, students who are asking questions. I would only know their names. <clears throat> so feel free. Feel very free to ask me to repeat. I, I, I become very happy if people ask me, Ki, Sir, nahi. please tell me again. I'm very happy with that because that's the only way I know that you are listening. Because see, nobody is like a superman or a superwoman, right? Nobody understands everything. That means there are some things you will not understand. But ask me to repeat. Now, why, the, why am I saying it's a it's suggestive epidermal blister? Because it's a movement between epidermal layers, no? Clear? Okay, got it. Now, I hope everybody is becoming clear with this, right? Okay, okay. cool. Now, <clears throat> Let's look at epidermal. There is something very important. Let's look at a term right on called as keratinization. And there's a central patho central uh, process in the skin for all of us. Okay. Uh, Shishti, no, we cannot differentiate foliation and vulgaris with this. Both uh, will have positive Nikolsky sign. In foliation, only the cornea moves with your finger and here the three layers. But you would not know just by looking at it whether three layers are moving or one layer is moving. So both will be positive. Both will have positivity. Okay. What is keratinization? Now see this. We know that stratum corneum is the most traumatized. So it has the maximum keratin. So let's assume it's got about 10,000, 1,000 milligrams of keratin. Let's assume. Because it has the maximum. It is most traumatized. Stratum granulosum is less traumatized. So it is easily given lesser keratin. So about 100 milligrams of keratin, let's assume. Stratum spinosum will have even lesser keratin requirement because it is deeper. It is protected. It is, there's less trauma. And stratum basale has the least trauma. So that's only 1 milligram of keratin. So as you go up in the epidermis, can you see more and more keratin synthesis? That is called keratinization. Everybody has this. All of us, all of us have keratin formations. In the skin, gradually you will find more and more keratin as we go up. Got it clearly? Yes? Okay. Okay? Alright. Now, so we understand now this 1000 milligrams of keratin is going to be enough to hold a pen. So I am holding a pen. So at that contact point, I have 1000 milligrams of keratin. But some students hold the pen too tightly. They'll say, oh, I know, I, I'm, pu I'm putting more pressure. And let's say it's, a, it's an exam, uh, it's, it's a lecture that we give now in DBMCI, 7 hours, 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, right? And it's 12 hours of pressure on that one point. Are you with me on this? So now, some students, when they hold very tightly for long hours, epidermis says, hey, 1000 milligrams is not enough for this idiotic fellow. He's giving me so much of trauma. So let me thicken my corneum and let me temporarily increase the keratin formation here to 10,000 milligrams. So this area of the corneum will become a bit elevated, will become a bit hard, will become a bit thick. So it's extra corneum formation in that contact point and that right down is thickened corneum and that is called hyperkeratosis. See the word now? 
तो हाइपर कैरेटोसिस इज थिक हार्ड स्किन बिकॉज यू आर पुटिंग टू मच प्रेशर ठीक है ना एनी थिक एंड हार्ड स्किन लुक्स ब्लैक I'll show you this now. Looks dark. So I'll tell, I'll tell you this thing. It becomes hilarious sometimes. Uh, see, in India, na we are very color color conscious as a race, है ना? In India, if if you ask a real, if you ask a mother to be very honest with her feelings, and if her daughter is playing in the sun, and her daughter becomes tanned, what is tanning? Tanning is increase of melanin. Yeah. So she has more and more melanin. Right, so she becomes dark, and a mother will say, "Oh, oh, my daughter is becoming dark. Oh, that's not good. Let me put, ask her to use a sunscreen, or let me ask her to play indoors. Oh, she's going to a swimming pool. Oh, she's becoming darker. So there's a lot of color consciousness, right? So one reason for having dark skin is increase of melanin. Interestingly, one more reason for dark skin is thick skin. So thick skin also looks black, and that's why it's very common that if you have dark parents. Right, they're secretly hoping that the newborn that they create will be a bit of a shade fairer. Secretly, and they don't tell that because it's not politically right to say that, right? So they're hoping, right? And you know what happens? A neonate, like a newborn baby, is always a bit fairer than their parents. Their parents say, "Oh, all my wishes have been satisfied. I've got a fair baby. Wow, God, thank you so much." But you know what? The baby and the parents have the same amount of melanin, possibly. But the baby's skin is very thin as a newborn, and that's why he is just falsely looking a bit fairer. Okay, because if thick skin is dark, thin skin is fair, right? So thin skin looks a bit gora, right? And that's the thing, you know. As the child grows older, you'll find the thickness of the skin becomes like the thickness of the parents, right? It's not very thin anymore, and the color obviously changes. right so that's not because of more melanin that's because of the skin becoming thicker and thicker and thicker i hope you got that clearly now yeah so this is what i would want to show you just to show you what is this hyperkeratosis concept let me just show you that yeah can you appreciate the hyperkeratosis of holding a pen at the contact point becomes thicker and thicker and thicker and that is typically what is the hyperkeratosis Concept, right? And that's because you're kind of holding a pen at that particular grip, and that kind of is becoming harder. Obviously, if you change the grip or if you use a pen which has got a cushion, when the pressure reduces and the hyperkeratosis then also reduces automatically, because now the epidermis does not have any reason to make that extra keratin. You got that clearly? Yeah. Okay. Now, can you see this? This is this is somebody who's gone to the gym, and is kind of you know kind of doing that with dumbbells. Yeah. So when he's kind of doing that with dumbbells. This area becomes hyperkeratotic because obviously the pressure comes on this, right? You know, people will think that you know, no, I will make biceps and triceps in seven days. But before the pressure going to the muscles, the pressure first goes to the epidermis, no, of the dumbbells, and the dumbbell and the skin becomes thicker before the biceps become thicker. You get this, and this is the hyperkeratosis, and this again you can make out why it's a bit darker. Can you see it's darker? Than the rest of the hands because this is hyperkeratosis, which makes it look. And this is so easy now to understand. So many people come to us with dark, uh, extensor elbows, right? And this is again not more melanin. This is basically just because you're putting more trauma there. There's a bit of rubbing and friction when you kind of, you know, uh, do a, when you pendulate around this particular uh, elbow when you're reading or something. And it's very common for this blackness to then start coming in, and that is actually just a thick skin. Okay, it's just thick skin which makes it look black. Okay, got it. So don't really worry. You know, a lot of people will come to us. Say, Sir, you know, I don't feel like living because my elbows are dark. I'm like, grow up. You know, people nowadays become depressed just like this. You know, it takes doesn't take them long to become anxious and depressed. If I have bad looking elbows, imagine people can bed become depressed with that. I'm like. Please grow up. At least, you know. Please stop being so narrow-minded in your approach to life. Start thinking about global warming for once. You know, Earth is warming up, and the oceans are filling up because the ice is melting. Why don't you think of that? Why don't you? Why do you think about your silly black elbows? 
can you see this orientation change orientation perspective and i tell them oh it's okay you're a student you're going to sit like this in the in the in the library or in the canteen wherever you are no whatever your orientation is and then you're going to have pressure on that and it's it's okay so these are rubbing points which will be a bit dark and now you understand why this also is so common when you sit cross legged on the floor the whatever foot is going to be in touch with the floor will become thick and hard and you can see even here if you can appreciate there's a bit of this hyperkeratosis and that's very very common it is reversible provided that pressure goes away are you with me on this hyperkeratosis concept yeah okay now there's one more concept that i want you to so we understood hyperkeratosis yeah we understood hyperkeratosis yeah correct which is too much keratin uh hardly no but you're not really we don't really see vitamin c working very well on that hyperkeratosis now there is also something called as acanthosis acanthosis is nothing but thickened stratum spinosum okay there are some disorders where they thicken spinous cells that we'll speak about after some time okay and for, how do you remember the word acanthos means spine okay so the word acanthosis means thickened spinous layer theek hai yes palmar skin what happens with palmar skin is actually there is a lot of thickness of that skin as well okay so automatically it's a bit darker okay though it doesn't have sun so that sun component is not there so it never becomes tanned right the so back of the hand there's a bit of tanning component also front of the hand there's no tanning but there's a hyperkeratosis concept so you can see the lines also becoming a bit blacker okay now if the word acanthos means spine so now you understand the word acantholysis see this now derivative of that the word acantho means spine the word lysis means cut so if the spine gets cut spine means what desmosome So whenever in dermatology the desmosome gets cut, it is called acantholysis. Are you with me on this? And this is seen in pemphigus, bache. This is seen in the disease pemphigus. This is seen in the disease pemphigus. Let me explain pemphigus to you now. Or maybe I can do that after some time. Okay, just listen. Now I'm not explaining. I'm going to explain after some time. That will be better. So desmosome getting cut is pemphigus disease. Got it? clear okay now let's get to epidermal cells bache let's get to epidermal cells hmm the first epidermal cell we need to know is a keratinocyte short form we use is kc is everybody following bache simple enough i hope simple enough for all of you i hope simple enough for all of you to understand now keratinocytes basically come from the ectoderm okay the keratinocytes are cells like this which are typically polygonal in the epidermis and they tend to have inside we already know that keratin so we can call them keratin filament inside and that obviously gives you strength ha na got it the keratocyte is present in all four layers all of your four epidermal layers have keratinocytes that means all of them have keratin so see this word basal keratinocytes spinous keratinocytes granular keratinocytes corneum keratinocytes all of them have keratinocytes now so there are keratin filaments inside look at this analogy okay Look at the fourth analogy I want to create for you right now. Cane basket analogy. Look at the cane. What is a cane basket? If you have ever been uh, to a market, like a vegetable market or a fruit market, there are some people who you know they come from their own places and they have this basket, they're like a cane basket, right? Which has got this crisscross cane. Okay, it's called it's called cane, right? Cane basket. and it's a very tough basket right so they can put their fruits in that and sell it like that but look at individual cane so when you have each cane each element of that basket 
it doesn't really give a lot of strength. Each one is not giving strength. But when you intermingle that, when you intermingle the different canes into a crisscross network, then you can make a strong basket out of that. Is that clear? Is that clear? So look at the same analogy now. Think of the keratin filaments. Think of the keratin filament as the cane. Meaning what? Individually, the keratin filaments don't give you strength. Like how the cane did not give strength on its own. You have to intermingle the cane to make a basket. Same way the keratins have to be intermingled inside the keratinocyte. Otherwise, it will not give you strength. So that means each keratin filament is joining the other keratin filament. And that means there is a joining protein. Can you see what I'm saying? There is something called as filagrin. Which joins the keratin filaments. Did you get that clearly? So now it becomes a, like a tough basket. And now it gives a good amount of strength to the cell. Clear? Everybody clear with this? Okay. What is the function of your keratinocytes? Function we already know is strength. Right? One more function is it is an immune cell also. Because it secretes cytokines against microbes. So don't think of keratinocyte as only a physical strength giving cell. It also gives you some degree of immunity because it sends in cytokines which then are going to create a lot of microbial killing. Sindhu, thank you, thank you. Your understanding, good, good, good. Okay, now, second cell I want to know about is a melanocyte. Short form is MC. The melanocyte is from the neural crest. Okay. The neural crest. Let me give you the analogy and this is, this is again a nice analogy, the fifth analogy I want to give you. The analogy is bus depot, bus and passenger. Let's look at this analogy now. Bus depot, bus and passenger analogy. What is that analogy? Let me, let me bring up that analogy to you. So let me just show you, let me just show you this analogy. Uh, both actually, uh, galaxy, in the corneum, there's more number also of keratinocytes and there's more keratin also inside those keratinocytes, both. Okay, now this is your bus depot, right? This is the depot you can understand, the bus depot, right? And this is the bus parked inside the depot. Are you with me on this? Hana? Now, do you realize the bus, when it's inside the depot, it is empty. It's an empty bus inside the depot, right? Got this? Now, the bus comes out of the depot and starts running on the road. Now, as it starts running on the road, it starts filling up with passengers. Do you get this, what I'm saying? It starts filling up with, these are now passengers inside the bus, right? And it will, they will drop these passengers into a particular location. Are you with me on this analogy? So let me just bring up this analogy to you, okay? Think of the bus depot as the neural crest. Think of the buses as the melanocytes, which are parked inside the neural crest in embryonal stage. So when the melanocytes are parked inside the neural crest, they're empty. So we can call them an empty melanocyte inside the neural crest. And they start running on the road. As they start running on the road now, they start filling up with passengers. Think of the passengers as melanin. So now they start making melanin inside. So now it's a filled bus on the road. And they will drop these passengers into a particular location, right? What are the location of these melanocytes? These buses basically go into the skin, meaning the melanocytes go into the bottom of the skin. So melanin is released in the epidermis. So our skin is dark. One more direction where these buses go is your hair. So your hair also has melanocytes, your hair also has melanin. One more is your eye. So your eye also is dark. So there are three targets for these melanocytes, skin, 
hair and the eye and that's why we have dark skin dark hair and dark iris so let me just explain this this is your neural crest i hope you got this analogy this is your melanocyte and this is your melanin did you see this please okay now listen carefully okay so melanocytes are where in your epidermis in your hair and in your eye it's also in your brain but at the moment you're not focusing on that clear everybody got this clearly now how do you make melanin melanin comes from an amino acid tyrosine by action of enzyme tyrosinase So tyrosinase determines the amount of melanin that you would get. Why do you need melanin, bache? Melanin is for ultraviolet light protection. You need to protect yourself from sunlight. Why? Because sunlight is carcinogenic. So we need to have some kind of protection against our sun. Take I got it. Clear? Obviously now this means that more melanin is less cancer. Right? And less melanin meaning obviously somebody who is fair skin will be more cancerous and no wonder now Americans, Australians, Europeans are struggling with cancers and Indians being darker races we have less cancer in India. So you know I told you that Indian skin we, we want fairer and fairer skins. And we want to use fair and lovely, fair and handsome, do the latest glow treatment. You want to do a scrub, you want to do a pack, you want to do a bleach. Everything, something that makes you fairer and whiter. But you guess what? I always say the best skin to aspire for is jet black skin. Now if you want to really you know, dream of something on 31st December, dream that doctor please tomorrow, God please make me jet black like an African. Because darker skins do have less carcinogenesis and they obviously suffer lesser but obviously we don't like that right as an Indian society we like fairer skin so that becomes counterproductive sometimes okay okay got it I'm going to draw this to you now this is your basal cell now this is your melanin inside so this is your MC and this is your melanin clear Okay, now, interestingly, this is your keratinocyte. This is also keratinocyte, right? Now, the problem is sunlight hits this cell also, no? Sunlight hits this cell also and sunlight hits this cell also. But melanocytes have protection. Melanin is there only in the melanocyte, no? It's not there in the keratinocyte, no? So, now, keratinocyte tends to become cancer very fast because it is unprotected. So, what does nature do? To give melanin to the keratinocyte. So what it does interestingly is it tells the melanocytes. It, it is told the melanocyte. It's told the melanocyte by. See the analogy that I will give now. The sixth analogy that I want to give. Is let's take the analogy of somebody that all of us obviously look up to. Ratan Tata. Let's look at the analogy of Ratan Tata. See Ratan Tata obviously is, is, is obviously a big shot businessman. Uh, now he's become very frail and old. But we know stories about Tata and, and as a company, they really support a lot of social activities, right? We know that, right? So he has a lot of money or the institute at the company that he owns, he owned rather, uh, had a lot of money. So they said, okay, okay, let's not keep it to ourselves. Let's kind of do philanthropy and let's give it out to people who need it. Same way now, your Melno site is Ratan Tata or Bill Gates or whoever you want to look at the big philanthropy person who says, okay, I have a lot of money. Let me give it to people who need it. Now, who needs it? Keratinocyte needs it now. So, keratinocyte is a poor person and melanocyte is a rich person. Do you get this analogy? So, what does melanocyte do? Melanocyte starts making finger-like projections and through these finger-like projections, the money gets transferred to the keratinocyte. Do you get this? From the rich to the poor. So now one melanocyte gives melanin to 36 keratinocytes. This is called epidermal melanin unit. 
epidermal melanin unit which is 1 is to 36. Now tell me if this made sense. Okay, now because it's got these finger-like projection, no wonder the melanocytes have been called as dendritic cells. Dendrite, the word dendrite means finger. So they are finger-like projections, right, of these cells. Got it? Now let me show you a video which will illustrate this exact, the exact point. So this is your typical melanocyte. Can you see this dendritic process? It's kind of born with, this is the bus coming from the neural crest. Yeah, can you see the passengers inside? The melanin inside? Can you see this? Can you see the dendritic process? Enough, got it? Now, now you will find that this is your transfer from Ratan Tata to poor. You can see this dendritic process. And see the melanin and the money is moving now from the rich person to the poor person and this is your dendritic process okay it's ready to transfer now okay and you see the cancer are so poor can you see the money transfer happening right and the keratocytes now also get protection so can you see this one melanocyte is helping so many people right and that is the epidermal melanin unit 1 is to 36 and that's why melanin is so vital so that's when you have fair skin, okay? It's very difficult to protect your epidermis. And then they start getting carcinogenesis quite fast. And that again, I want to show you what kind of carcinogenesis really happen. Let me just show you that. Now, see, this is just to show you first what would happen. Now, this, what I've circled right now is your melanocyte, okay? Can you see this dendritic process? All these pink cells are all keratinocytes, right? So let's assume we are talking about a very fair skinned person, like an, like an American or an Australian, and he's doing stupidly, he's doing sunbathing, right? And there's an ozone hole right on top, and he's not even using a sunscreen, so he's unprotected. So let's assume now the sunlight would hit this particular skin. Now, this melanocyte is unprotected, doesn't have melanin, right? So inside we have DNA, so let's assume this is the DNA inside that melanocyte it will get fractured by the ultraviolet light and now there's going to be dna mutation and this dna mutation will create cancers which i'll show you now so let's assume it's a white skinned person and now it's now hit now this is the normal dna and now this pink illustrate the pink illustrate there's a mutation in one strand there's a dna fragmentation dna mutation there's a dna damage from the ultraviolet light and now this cell starts becoming malignant so now let's assume that this is your malignant melanocyte. Can you see it's already trying to divide? Malignant melanocyte is nothing but a melanoma, right? And you will see how it proliferates. So you will see how it really, really proliferates. Can you see this? It is really badly proliferating and it becomes a tumor mass. And you can even appreciate how there is a blood supply going into the tumor cells. And this is by the way called neoangiogenesis meaning support, the body is supporting these tumor cells by giving it nutrition and growth factors and these melanocytes will actually invade this vessel and then it will cause metastasis. Can you see the mets now happening? Did it become clear, bache? Everybody got this clearly? No confusion, I hope, very simply explained. Tell me if you understood this. You want me to explain this again? Okay, no problem. Let me do that. Uh, so let's assume I'm saying that this is a fair skin person, right? So there is no melanin now, right? So now the ultraviolet light will hit this. The ultraviolet light basically damages your DNA. Okay, major bad, bad damage your DNA. So now what the video showed you, what the video showed you, was damage to the DNA. This was the DNA damage, I told you. So the pink is your DNA, that's a DNA. The, the blue is a DNA, the pink is the damaged DNA, right, inside the melanocyte. And this damaged DNA causes problems with the division because DNA regulates division. If there's a problem in DNA, there's more division of the melanocyte 
and the basal medullary sac is dividing too much and overpowers the other cells. Can you see this? Overpowering, it's becoming a mass of malignant melanocyte and this will be a melanoma. And that's why I told you that fair skin people get a lot of melanomas, right? Galaxy, did that make sense, Bache? I'm re I've repeated again, did it make sense? Nimra, please tell me. No, Shristi, uh, even keratinocytes will have mutation. Yes, that's a good question that you asked. That's a good question that you asked, which I can actually tell you also. See, if the ultraviolet light hits the melanocyte, so the melanocyte will become a cancer and that is actually called melanoma. But if that hits the keratinocytes, that is going to be called as squamous cell cancer and basal cell cancer. So anything can happen. All three is possible. Okay, at the moment we were, because the video is about the melanocyte, so that's why I did not mention that. But even the keratinocyte is going to be hit. It's not that they are resistant. It depends on where the maximum uh, uh, hit is going to be. Okay, clear? I hope these videos are also helping you in understanding what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, got it? Okay, now the third one is a Langerhans cell. In the epidermal, we are still on the epidermal cells. LC. Good, good. I'm happy everybody's asking questions, everybody's getting involved. I'm happy about that to see. Okay. Now, Langerhans cell is one more analogy now, the seventh analogy. Already we are on the seventh analogy. The seventh analogy is, and I love this analogy, India, Pakistan, line of control. India, Pakistan, line of control. Let's understand this now. So, let's look at the image for this analogy. Again, they should be able to help you a lot. Okay, in understanding the, this is what I want to show you. Huh? Now, this, the circle that I am making is a line of control, which is a fence, like a barbed wire, right? Now, this is Pakistan here and on our side we have India, right? And the fence in between. Now, would you realize that Pakistanis always want to come inside and trouble us with terrorists, but because there's a fence, Poor fellows have to go back. Here AR, there's no opening in the fence, so I can't really go in, right? But let's assume there's a small hole in the fence. Now these Pakistani terrorists would come inside the Indian country. Now fortunately, we have this fellow guarding our LOC, which let's call it a BSF person, a border security force person. Now this BSF person will catch that terrorist, hold him and take him to the army headquarters in Kashmir. So army headquarters may, they are going to be told, they are going to be saying, okay, go, 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 go there. Okay, I will not uh, do anything, I'll just catch you and take you to my headquarters. So they drop this particular fellow into the headquarters. Huh? In the headquarters, there's a higher person, which is a commander or a BSF commander who says, okay, please go and pick up more people, I'll handle this fellow. So in the, in the headquarters, what happens? The, the, the commander will first ask questions to this fellow. Where are you from? What do you do? Do you have an Indian passport? Are you an Indian citizen? Do you have an Aadhaar card? Do you have Modi ji certificate on the COVID vaccine? All that stuff, right? So uh, he says, no, 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 I don't have any of that. That means he's a, he's not a Kashmiri. He's a Pakistani. So he's going to be punished. Are you with me on this analogy? You got this one saying? So let's look at this analogy from a Langerhans cell perspective. Okay, let's look at the, this from a Langerhans cell perspective. This here is your epidermis. Okay, the line of control is or we can call it the stratum corneum. Okay, the stratum corneum is your line of control. The air and the environment is Pakistan. Okay, you get what I'm saying? This so outside this Pakistan, no, and the terrorists are the microbes. The terrorists are the microbes, right? So microbes always want to come inside, but stratum corneum does not have a gap. So that's why all your microbes just bounce off your skin surface, there's no gap. But let's say you're playing cricket on a Sunday and you get a hole in your skin, you get a wound. Now the microbes easily come inside. So now the microbes are inside, the terrorists are inside. Your BSF person is nothing but the Langerhans cell. 
So Langerhans cell now picks up this particular antigen, which is the microbe, and sends them to the headquarter. The headquarter is your lymph node. The army headquarter is your lymph node. Are you with me on this? So now do you understand these Langerhans cells take the antigen presented to the lymph nodes? So now is so logically, now you understand why logically it's called antigen presenting cell. Are you see this? Antigen presenting. It presents the antigen to the local lymph nodes for processing. The lymph nodes say, okay, okay, you go and pick up more people. I'll take care of this fellow. So lymph node now analyzes that particular microbe. What is it? Is it a bacteria? Is it a virus? What is it? And so oh, it's a virus. Oh, it's a COVID virus. Oh, it's a HPV virus. Oh, it's a Staphylococcus. Whatever. But it's not your own, right? So it will be killed. Interestingly, lymph nodes have two immune forces for deployment. Okay? T cells and B cells. If the lymph nodes decide that it's a virus, it will send T cells, which are called as Th1 cells. Th1 means T helper 1. If, see I'm just saying this again, okay, lymph nodes have two immune forces, Th1 and Th2, T helper 1, T helper 2. If it sees that there's a virus, it has to send Th1. Th1 means you make a lot of T cells. Only T cells can kill viruses, by the way, in your body. If it says, oh, it's a bacteria, so it will deploy Th2 cells. Th2 means B cells, B cells make antibodies. Antibodies can kill bacteria. So you will now understand why beautifully it was already been called as a Langerhan cell, has been called as an antigen presenting cell, APC. And now you understand one more last thing before we start writing. We know Langerhan cells have to pick up antigens. So to pick up it's good to have hands, you know, like an octopus. So that's why Langerhan cells are also beautifully, Langerhan cells are beautifully dendritic as well. Now this I would want to show you. Please copy this. This is exact same thing in a diagrammatic language. But are you understanding? Is it making sense? Is it becoming simple? I'm trying to make it very simple with analogies and you will have no headache in understanding dermatology that much I can tell you. We are making it absolutely like butter and makhan. You know, we say makhan, makhan marke. So we are now trying to make it as smooth as possible. Understood? Written? Okay, now, I'll tell you something quite interesting now. Let me just show you something quite interesting now. Okay. Now listen to this now. Okay, let's go here. Okay. So now, what we know is, this is your melanocyte, right? Now, melanocyte is your own stuff, right? And this is the Langerhans cell. This is your Langerhans cell. Okay, this is your melanocyte. Clear? So Langerhans cell should only pick up Pakistani, no? So BSF person should only pick up whom? Pakistani intruders. But what if the Langerhans cells start making a massive mistake? What if these Langerhans cells, what if the Langerhans cells don't pick up, what if the Langerhans cells don't pick up Pakistanis, this fellow is picking up and weirdly so, he's picking up a normal Kashmiri. He's picking up Indian people, thinking them to be Pakistanis. So see what happens now. So now this Langerhans cell, one second, no, please. Okay, one minute, one minute. Yeah. So this Langerhan, this melanocyte, what if it's picked up by the Langerhan cells? By mistake. Langerhan cell take it to the lymph nodes for processing. Lymph nodes say, okay, okay, let me kill it. So what if it makes T cells? And these T cells now are smashing your melanocytes. So you are killing your own Kashmiris. These are autoimmune diseases. Can you understand the autoimmunity concept? And this has been called as a disease by the name of vitiligo, where you get white patches on the skin as an autoimmune Melanocyte destroying process. Are you with me on this? Now keep on listening, keep on listening. Now what if this is a desmosome? What if the desmosome is now picked up by the Langerhans cells? Thinking it to be bad, sending it to the lymph nodes. This time the lymph nodes make B cells and antibodies. 
and these B cells are killing your desmosomes. Is this not the process that we spoke about of acantholysis where you have B cell killing of this desmosome and we now understand that this is going to be a pemphigus autoimmune disease. Tell me if you understood this now. I'm, I'm sure this is simple for you to understand. So when you pick up your own melanocytes, that's vitiligo. When you pick up your own desmosomes, that's pemphigus. Please write this down. Now remember one more thing that all autoimmunity is acquired. Nobody is born with autoimmunity. So nobody is born with pemphigus. Yes, bache. Pemphigus is always autoimmune. Nobody is born with pemphigus. Huh? Nobody is born with vitiligo. Nobody is born with pemphigus. Got it? Okay, now, now that you get this now, let's look at one more cell now, which is Merkel cell, write down it's a touch receptor in the basal layer. So now we know of all epidermal cells, we know keratinocytes, we know melanocytes, we know Langerhan cells, and we also now know Merkel cells. Thank you, Babita. I, I do my best. That's what I know. And usually when you do your best and when you enjoy what you're doing, things, outputs is always good. Thank you. Thank you for that compliment. Okay. Done, bache? Okay. So now, let me bring up something again. Okay, let me bring up another analogy. The eighth analogy. By the end of <laughs> the last day, you will... You will be shocked at the number of analogies we are going to do. The analogy is a, a rocket analogy. Okay. So, rocket going up. Okay. So, let's look at this rocket analogy. Okay. Now, if you see any rocket for that matter, you know, uh, let me show you that. Okay. So, if you see a rocket going up, there's a lot of energy requirement right at the lift off time because obviously there's a lot of fuel consumption. So maximum fuel consumption is at lift off time. Yes, got it. So this is this the rocket just goes up and shoots up and there's all fuel consumption. So there's a lot of fuel which is getting consumed. So if you see any rocket for that matter at lift off time, you'll find a lot of fuel tanks attached to that particular because you know it has to escape the Earth's gravity. Now as it goes up, you will find that after some time, the rocket tends to tilt a bit. Then it tilts a bit more and then a bit more and then it becomes into orbit. Are you with me on this? So every rocket, you will find that it becomes slanted and starts going up. Now one more thing. As it goes up, it has momentum, no? So it needs lesser and lesser fuel. So then it, this has less fuel, that is even lesser fuel, and even lesser fuel. So you'll find the fuel tanks actually drop off. Have you seen those videos? The fuel tanks drop off from that and fall into the ocean, not on someone's head. So that's how they are designed, right? And that is the first thing. Let's look at that analogy. Beautiful analogy. Let's look at this analogy. Okay. okay. Now think of your basal keratinocyte as a rocket. Okay, so that means this basal cell first of all is vertical. Yeah, rockets. Can, I, I have you seen a rocket which is horizontal at lift off? No, right? Now it needs fuel, right? So the fuel comes from the nucleus, right? So this is fuel now, which is ATP, and that's why it has a big fuel tank. The fuel tank is a nucleus. Are you with me on this? Clear? Yeah, okay. Now 
Now, as the basal cell is there, now the spinous layer is a bit slanted, granulosum is a bit more slanted, and cornum is completely flat, no? Like a rocket going up. So, you, as the rocket tilted, your keratinocytes also tilt. And one more thing, obviously, nucleus requirement is lesser, no? So, smaller nucleus, even smaller nucleus, and no nucleus. Are you with me on this, what I'm saying? No nucleus in the corneum. Because there is no ATP generation in the corneum, it's a dead cell into orbit. Clear? And from here it falls. From here it falls off. Call it, got it? Now, it takes 28 days from the basal cell to falling. This is called the transit time of the epidermis. So, transit time is about a month. So, it takes about a month from the basal layer to fall off. So, interestingly, this falling off is invisible. Have you ever seen that falling off? Hardly anything, right? Imagine once a month. <laughs> How crazy is that? Once a month, your cell falls off. Your entire skin falls off from head to toe once a month. How crazy is that? Yeah? So, all of us should have a skin cycle. Right? So, every 28 days or so, we should even have, every guy should have or every female also should have one more calendar. That, okay, now it's one month, so now my skin will start shedding. So, that's a skin cycle. Right? So, we should know our dates. Male should also know our dates. Oh, this is the date for my skin falling now. Yes. But is that there? No. No, that happens in a snake, by the way. The snake can kind of, you know, shed off its entire old skin. That's called molting. Right? Do you molt? Does your skin mold like that as humans? No. Because it's an in invisible fall, you don't see it. Okay? If it's a visible fall, it's called a scale. So, scale in dermatology is nothing but a visible fall of your skin. That is a sign of disease. That's a sign of a disease in dermatology. Take care. Got it? Just to show you, again, I love the power of videos as well. This is your video for the basal layer. You see the rocket vertical? And can you see the vertical rocket now going up? Okay, keep on looking at the top. Okay, keep on looking at the top layer. Just focus on the top layer. Look at the nucleus now. Look at the top layer and the nucleus. Can you see the nucleus is getting lost? Can you see the nucleus getting lost? Nucleus gone. Can you see it's becoming a horizontal cell now in the corneum? A flat cell and keeps on accumulating, keeps on accumulating. One day it just sheds up in the environment and you will see the shedding now. Can you see the shed now into the environment? And this shed is a painless shed and it's an invisible shed. We do shed our skin but we don't see it because these are microscopic cells which keep on coming out. That's why you don't see it. Right? Everybody got this clearly? Yes? Okay. Clear? Now, one more analogy, the ninth, I guess. Yeah, ninth. Ninth analogy is compare the normal epidermis to a good strain, to a slow good strain. So let's look at this. What do you mean by this? Slow good strain. So let's say you imagine a good strain now. Imagine a good strain now, which is starting from Mumbai, right? Think of that as a basal layer and going to Delhi, which is the stratum corneum, right? And we now understand it's going to take 28 days to travel that distance from Mumbai to Delhi. It's a very, very slow train. So, if it's a very slow train, obviously, the materials inside the bogey can be taken out because it will stop at some stations, you will find stuff taken out, you will find stuff going into the bogey and then the train gradually chugs along. Yeah, God was saying. So, now look at the material inside as the nucleus. Meaning what? As the cell goes up, as the cell goes up, the train is going up, Mumbai is basal layer. Spinous is one more station of the train, Ganesh is one more station of the train and corneum is your Delhi. So when the train is so slow, the passengers inside, the material inside the goods train can be taken out. The passenger is the nucleus. 
So now the passenger is coming out, no, from that cell and that's why the corneum does not have a nucleus. So see what I'm saying. Can I not say this 28 days in one more way? Can I not say that it takes 28 days for the nucleus to come out of the bogey? Can you say it? Can you remember this? Can you understand this? So nucleus is coming out of the cell. It takes 28 days for this nucleus to gradually come out of this particular cell. Are you with me on this? Now see now. Beautiful things coming up. Okay. Now don't copy please. Just listen, 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 listen. Very important stuff. Very, very and it's very simple. Okay. I'm trying to make it very simple for you to understand. Now we are talking about a disease called as psoriasis. Just focus on the green circles I'm going to make. Okay. Or rather the blue bands are better. The green, the yellow would be better. Psoriasis is a disease we are talking about. Now psoriasis is a disease where the basal cells are stimulated by T cells. So T cells come in. So all these red dots are T cells. They stimulate the basal cell to divide faster. So we know it's an autoimmune disease. So now when the basals are dividing faster, it goes from Mumbai to Delhi in just four days flat. So it is not a 28 day good strain. It is actually a bullet train. So now the analogy I want to give you is psoriasis. Don't copy anything, please. Psoriasis is a bullet train analogy now, which starts from Mumbai possibly and gets to Delhi in just four days flat. Now, when it is such a fast train, it first of all, it's so fast, the passengers may not even have time to come out of that train because they'll get injured. From slow train, passengers can come out. Fast train, they can't come out. So that means the nucleus does not have an opportunity to come out. So will you not then get a nucleated stratum corneum in psoriasis? So nucleus is not lost in psoriasis. This has been called as parakeratosis. Nucleated stratum corneum. Can you see that? I've drawn a nucleus inside the corneum cells. Usually it is not seen, but here it is seen. One more thing. Cell goes up in four days, but it's not falling only. The cells don't fall. So cells continue to be retained in the corneum. Cells don't fall. Cells retain in the corneum. So now corneum has a traffic jam. So a lot of cells, there's no falling. So you will find gradually very, very thick corneum starts to come in. We know that is hyperkeratosis. So there are two histopathology problems in psoriasis. Now we understand hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis. And the hyper will be looked at like this. Can you appreciate this? So a very thick corneum. Now this hyperkeratosis is not because of holding the pen. It's just because the skin is just not falling off. And that is the concept of hyperkeratosis and psoriasis. And this now makes you understand why the treatment for psoriasis now is very easy to understand. Okay. One treatment would be just keep on listening. One treatment would be this. Meaning remove your T cells from this equation. Remove the T cells. So there's no stimulation of the basal cells. And that is done by methotrexate and cyclosporine, which inhibits T cells. One more option is work on the corneum and give a keratolytic drug. Keratolytic drug. There are two keratolytic drugs we have. One is salicylic acid, one is retinoids. Now the word retinoid, again my tendency to split words. Retin and oid. Retin, you know from biochemistry, retinol, retinaldehyde. Retinol, retin means vitamin A, oid means like. So it's a vitamin A like drug. Do you get that clearly? Everybody got this clearly? Yes. So what I want you to do, Bache, is click this, please. I don't think you should copy this whole stuff. Okay. So the analogy is like a bullet train. Please just click it with anything that you have. Okay. Maybe a different phone or something. Because it's going to take a lot of time if you just copy this down. Don't do that. Okay. So click this with something and leave a bit of space in your book. And I would, I would wish that and I would request that you copy it up later on. I just want you to tell me, Bache, did, was this understandable? I know these are new concepts. I know these are things that you're hearing for the first time. And one more thing I will tell you this. All these analogies na, are not something that is there in any book. I have tried off, you know, from daily life experiences. I have been over years, over 16 years, you know, when I remember I was traveling in a, in a Rajdhani train. So I, I saw, I thought of that analogy. Right? Uh, Harleen, why is it not falling off? That we'll speak about later, Bache. Uh, psoriasis is a disease of uh, keratinization. Okay? So the, the normal shedding is disturbed because of autoimmunity. Okay. 
Now, this is just to show you the normal skin. It is just to show you the normal skin. From here to here is the normal epidermis. Okay. Now you can make out the stratum corneum does not seem to have any nucleus. Right? And the bottom cell seems to have a lot of nuclei. Right? So let's focus only on the corneum. Right? Can you see this? No nucleus. Right? Now one more thing I wanted to focus on here is you can see a lot of nuclei in the bottom layers of the epidermis. Right? Uh, Shristi, no, don't worry about that, why the falling doesn't happen. We'll talk about it when we discuss psoriasis later on. At the moment, we can ignore that particular fact. Okay? Okay, now. Or if I can give you a more easy understanding as, as to why the cells don't fall off. Okay? Uh, uh, because people want to tell, uh, want to know. So let's, let's give you this analogy. If you want to know why the cells are not falling off, easy to understand actually. Now, uh... Uh, I'll give you this analogy of Mumbai, of, uh, I stay in Delhi, so I'll give the analogy of Delhi. Earlier I was in Mumbai, I've been born and brought up in Mumbai, whole, my whole, my whole life. Uh, I did my MD from a very good, good college there in Mumbai, which is Grand Medical College, JJ Hospital. So I, I spent a lot of my life in Mumbai, now I stay in Delhi. So uh, I can give you any analogy actually. So let me give you maybe a Delhi analogy, okay. In Delhi, na, there is a, is, a, is a big highway which, is, which has been recently built, which is called the Delhi Merit Highway. Okay, Delhi Merit. So, Merit is a city, Delhi is a city. So, beautiful, I think, an 8 or a 10 lane highway. So, from Merit, okay, the, the cars are coming in huge speed. Okay, and they're enjoying that. Oh, like an hour of, you know, like 100 kilometers an hour or 120 kilometers an hour, nobody stops, right? So, let's assume, and everybody's zooming, right? So let's say there's a thousand cars which are coming from on that highway and now they reach Delhi, right? So it's a very nice thing. Now they, they in, as soon as they enter in Delhi, they get their first signal, the red stop, right? Now they, the cars are stopping, you know, but what happens? Because there's so many cars coming in, thousand cars will now pile up at the stop, right? At the red signal, right? Now the red signal cannot allow all thousand cars to cross together, no? So the exit from that signal is like 10 cars at one time. Whereas what coming in is 1000 cars, but exit is 10, 10 cars. So will there not be a lot of traffic jam at the signal? So let's look at this analogy now. In psoriasis, a thousand cars, meaning a thousand cars are dividing up and going to the corneum very fast in four days. That's like the Merit Delhi highway. The cars are zooming. But stratum corneum is the time they have to fall off, row. So that's your red signal, that signal, which I told you in Delhi. So now the exit from the corneum cannot be as fast as the number of cells coming from below. So below, so many cells are coming, but falling is happening, but not at the same speed as the entry of cells. So there's a relative crowding of cells in the corneum. And that is the easiest way for me to tell you why there's a crowding in the corneum. Langerhans cells, which comes from bone marrow. Langerhans cells origin bone marrow. Okay. So let's come back to this. Okay. This is your epidermis. Right. Now, can you see now I told you, I was telling you that you can see nucleus very well here. But do you realize you don't see any cell margin? See, I don't see any keratinocyte at all. I don't see any margin of the polygonal cells. I don't see. I see only the nucleus. So why is it that you can see the nucleus and you can't see cell margin? Because all cells are stuck to each other. All cells are stuck to each other, right? So when the cells are stuck like this, what I'm saying, cells are stuck like this. So what will happen? Because the cells are sticking like this, you cannot see margin in between. But nucleus is not touching each other. So you can see the nucleus very well, you can't see margins well. And that's a simple explanation to understand why you see so many nuclei without too many margins. Yes, Rishti, you are correct. Okay, now, so this is basically now the normal epidermis. Now, can you appreciate the parakeratosis now? Can you appreciate the nucleated stratum corneum? So that means the cell will be going up in four days time, not having enough time to lose the nucleus. And that's why the passage is not coming off. So parakeratosis is easily understood in this particular image.
ओके गॉड इट क्लियर ओके नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वन मोर सेंट्रल एस्पेक्ट अबाउट डॉमेटोलॉजी विच अगेन आई नीड यू टू बी अवेयर ऑफ लेट्स अगेन लुक एट द येलो बैंड नाउ I told you Pakistanis don't are not allowed to come in, right? So there is no entry of a Pakistani into the body. Same way microbes don't come in, so you you don't have sepsis. Interestingly, Indians are also not allowed to go to Pakistan through the LOC, no? So dermis has fluid for all of us. Dermal fluid stays inside. Microbes stay outside. So outside is outside, inside inside. There is no communication. So this no entry, no exit concept has been called as barrier function. Barrier. function but in histopathology mein what i had said was you want me to do histopathology see you, are you talking about parakeratosis bache okay now this is just to show you this was normal skin this was normal epidermis right where the corneum is non nucleated and there is the rest of the epidermis i told you the nucleus is visible margins of the cells are not visible because cells are tightly bound to each other by the desmosomes in between and because they are tightly stuck you don't see margins you see only the nucleus that is what i told you in this is this was psoriasis if i just zoom in you can see some nucleated stratum corneum which is parakeratosis so cells are going up just in a very short period of 4 days time giving you parakeratosis theek hai okay coming back to this so barrier function i told you now is there's no entry no exit through the epidermis typically in a burns patient you don't have a barrier meaning there's no epidermis in burns now is it not so easy to understand for the first time possibly in your life you now have may have an explanation as to why burns patient have main two reasons of death only one is infections coming in so that is sepsis so infections are a big risk for burns one more risk is fluid loss all the time because they're leaking water out of their skin because there's no loc to prevent people from going across them it's free entry and free exit and that's the concept of a barrier clear now if you want to make a barrier i want you to listen to this very carefully bachche i want you to listen to this very carefully okay now we know we want a barrier right so let's say now let's say you have circular cells see first let's assume i will give you an option of putting circular keratinocytes in the epidermis or put polygonal cells in the epidermis polygons are better for a barrier no because polygons touch better so i'll put a tick mark on the polygons and a cross on the circle because normally all of us have polygonal cells but in the embryo see the yellow circle now in the embryo it is circular to begin with but i don't want circles so how can i convert a circle into a polygon you pull out the circle from many sides so wherever you pull it out you get a conical extension so wherever you pull it out so desmosome pulls out the keratinocytes and that's why you have a polygonal shape that's why you have a polygonal shape of the cell are you with me on this everybody that's why we have a polygonal cell so now we understand that desmosomes basically now you understand why desmosomes typically have two broad functions remember desmosomal function now i'll repeat desmosomal function one i told you earlier which was a suture which was a stitch joining cells one more is going to be it pulls out the cell all the time so that it becomes polygonal so two functions of your desmosome are you with me on this theek hai now we understand in pemphigus and i have explained this earlier the desmosomes get cut so i've got to put okay i'm going to now pull out the cell here and what is the red dots the red dots are the cuttings the red dots are the cutting of the desmosomes clear samjha and these cuts what do you think the cell of the, the shape of this cell would become will it not become a round or an acantholytic cell we call them zanc cells or acantholytic cells in pemphigus okay so this acantholytic why acantholytic because desmosomal cut is acantholysis only no theek hai so can you see this now circular cells 
Can you see the circular cells in pemphigus? Yeah, circular keratinocytes. Now, if there's going to be a circle, there's going to be a gap in between, no? And this gap, I told you, is always filled up with water, and that's the reason for the blister to come in people with a pemphigus, and that's the blistering of pemphigus. You can see the blister coming in, fluid accumulation, positive Nikolsky sign, and that is an epidermal split, and that is pemphigus. Clear? Everybody cool with this? I hope this is now crystal clear. You know? I usually use the word CC. You know, when we put an email, we put CC. CC in my dermatology, I'll say CC means crystal clear. Meaning everything is like clear, like diamonds, clear, right? Or if you, if you go a step further, BCC, bahut crystal clear, you know. So one of one of the students use use these terms to tell me when I ask na clear. So rather than saying yes and no, they devised an in innovative method CC and BCC. <laughs> so just to tell me that yes, things are being understood. Between PF and PV, that I'll tell you. Don't worry, I'll tell you how to differentiate. Okay. Now, let me tell you something again, very vital now. Okay. Now this is your keratinocyte. This is a keratinocyte and this is your keratinocyte, right? This is your basal keratinocyte, right? This is again a keratinocyte, again a keratinocyte. Now we know desmosome joins them together. So I'm going to draw three desmosomes. So this is your desmosomes. Okay, which join it together. We know that. Now desmosome needs to be strong to join them together, right? So it has desmoglane DSG which is a strength giving protein strength giving protein okay clear Krishna okay so Krishna what I said was uh, people with pemphigus have an autoimmune disease we know so desmosomes were getting cut now when the desmosomes are getting cut the cells cannot pull out the cell together outwards. Pulling it makes it polygonal. So when you cut the desmosome, they become roundish and circular, which I said was an acantholytic cell. If there's an acantholytic cell, there's an empty space in between. That fills up with water and that's where the blister came. See? Okay. So let's go to this now. So desmosomes have a protein inside. All of us have desmoglanes, which is a strength-giving protein. Clear? That's normal. Okay. Now in people who have pemphigus, they don't like their DSG. So they make antibody to the DSG. We are talking about what? Pemphigus now. Hmm? So they make antibody to the DSG as an autoimmune process. So DSG is gone. The desmosome is gone. Are you with me on this? And that is why the entire fracture happened of the desmosome. I told you desmosome is getting damaged because of this. Okay, clear? Yes, so that's pemphigus. So obviously it will be an epidermal blister. Always remember every epidermal blister is flaccid. Flaccid matlab loose. Flaccid matlab loose. Flaccid matlab loose. So it's a loose blister. Okay, what is a loose blister? This is what we mean by loose blister. It's loose, right? It's kind of sitting on itself almost and it's kind of falling on itself. Clear? What is pemphigus? Now, one more thing. Do you realize the basal cell also has to be joined below, no? To the dermoepidermal junction. So, this suture has been called as hemidesmosome. So, there are two sutures we need to know. This blue suture is something that connects the basal cell down below to the dermoepidermal junction. Anna? And the red suture is the desmosome, which connects between keratinocytes together. 
Now this hemidesmosome also has a strength giving protein called as BP1 protein inside. Like how your desmosomes had desmoglein inside, hemidesmosome has BP1 inside. Oh good, BCC has come in. <laughs> Thank you. So now in people, some people make an antibody to BP1 now of the IgG type. Clear what I'm saying? You don't like your BP1s, right? So this disease has been called as bullous pemphigoid. Bullous pemphigoid, bache. Okay, bullous pemphigoid. Short form we can use is BP. Now what will happen? They will hit the BP1. So strength is gone now. So the hemidesmosome has broken. Clear? So in pemphigus, the desmosome broke. In bullous pemphigus, the hemidesmosome breaks. Clear? Everybody got this clearly? So when the hemidesmosome breaks, the separation is somewhere here. No, see, see these dots is the fluid. So that is fluid below the basal keratinocyte. Did you get that what I'm saying? The separation is below the basal keratocyte, no? So the fluid comes there. So can I not call this a sub-epidermal blister? Okay, these subepidermal blisters are always going to be tense blisters, I mean very tight. That I'm going to tell you, show you a bit later on what tense blisters look like, but just write first. So epidermal blisters are always very flaccid and loose. That's pemphigus. Bullous pemphigus, which is a subepidermal blister, tends to be more tighter. Let me show you that first. What do we mean by tight blisters? One second, I'm just opening and I'm showing you the tight blisters, what it looks like. Okay, so this okay, is what a tight blister looks like, a tense blister. And this is going to be a sub-epidermal blister of bullous pemphigoid. Okay, so this is going to be the pemphigus stuff, right? This is going to be the bullous pemphigus stuff. Yeah, good. Okay. Clear? Everybody got this clearly? Okay. Okay. Now, let's give you this again. One more thing. Blisters are of two types. Please write down. Blisters are of two types. If the blister are less than 0.5 centimeter, we would call it a vesicle. If the blister is more than 0.5 cm, we call it a bulla. So bulla is a dermatology word for a big fluid fill lesion. And vesicle is a fluid fill lesion which is much smaller. Okay, now let's give you one beautiful perspective now for this. Please listen to this. We are again going back to pemphigus. We are going back to pemphigus. Okay, now remember the entire epidermis has desmosomes. The full epidermis would have desmosome because all cells have to be pulled out and all cells have to be made polygonal. But desmoglanes are a bit different. Upper epidermis tends to have desmoglane 1 and the lower epidermis tends to have desmoglane 3. What do you mean by upper lower? Now desmoglane 1 tends to be maximum in this zone. See the zone that I have created. Desmoglane is maximum between corneum and granulosum. 
contrast to that the desmogen 3 is maximum in this zone that is between the spinous and the basal layer between the spinous and the basal layer you have the maximum desmoglein 3 ye normal ki baat kar this is normal right in people who have pemphigus foliaceus you make only anti dsg3 one antibodies in pemphigus foliaceus you only make anti dsg1 antibodies as an autoimmune phenomena so you only hit dsg ones so will you not have acantholytic cells only here between the corneum and gallosum so that's why it's a subcorneal blister no you get this clear because there's going to be acantholytic cells between corneum and gallosum fluid only comes there at that level in pemphigus vulgaris you have anti desmoglein 3 antibodies so desmoglein 3 is gone you will have acantholytic cells between basal and spinous and that's why it's a supra basal condition now do you understand why we have a supra basal condition in vulgaris and a subcorneal condition in pemphigus foliaceus i hope this is clear again okay now one more thing in pemphigus foliaceus then tratum corneum is there then you have fluid right and granulosum spinosum and basal are together clear so can you see in pemphigus foliaceus let's say my left hand is a let's say my left hand let's say my left hand is a basal cell right hand is a spinous cell can you see in foliaceus the basal is stuck to the spinous see what i'm saying the basal is stuck to the spinous in pemphigus foliaceus so that's why you can't see you cannot see margins of the basal cell because stuck to the spinous layer did you get that clearly yes right but look at vulgaris corneum granulosum and spinosum are together then some water and then a basal layer no so can you see in vulgaris the basal has got separated from spinous so if it's got separated will you not start seeing the margins properly of the basal cells so in pemphigus vulgaris you will find the basal cells are properly visible margins are visible and there's a bit of water below that above that sorry got it one sign yes so now this what these are vertical cells no these vertical cells have been compared to row of tombstones in a grave so in pemphigus vulgaris we use a histopathology term so easily now to understand row of tombstones up there because it's separated no so you can see the margins very well of the basal layer usually you cannot see margins now you can so vertical cells are very well visible in pemphigus vulgaris i'll show you what i mean by row of tombstones this is now row of tombstones vertical cells properly visible in the basal layer because it's separated from the rest of the layers so you will find vertical these think of them as all basal cells clearly and that's row of tombstones appearance for pemphigus vulgaris which i can then show you in a histopath also now tell me the diagnosis bacho for this see what you can see here is this not pemphigus foliaceus stratum corneum is perfect a bit of fluid below that and three layers together and that's a subcorneal fluid of pemphigus foliaceus anti desmoglein 1 antibodies now this is pemphigus vulgaris three layers above a gap and a bottom layer below anti dig3 antibodies and if i show this basal in a bit more detail can you see the basal layers row of tombstone like cells in the basal layer and this is now all these acantholytic cells zang cells floating in the blistered space and there's a gap and a three layer above and that's vulgaris tell me if this is easy now to for you to understand tell me if this was easy now for you to understand was this session easy to understand bache i don't know if you realized but we have completed 2 hours of dermatology we started at 220 it's almost 420 now we have done 2 hours of dermatology and i we have done it in a very conceptual understanding i've shown you so many videos we've already completed 9 analogies 
okay nine different stories so imagine seeing a rocket so seeing a rocket who's launching up and looking at and thinking in your mind oh i can see a keratinocyte you look at a bullet train and say oh i'm looking at a keratinocyte in psoriasis you now understand the power of analogies you have a story a terrorist coming in you say oh, oh that's a pakistani terrorist means that's a microbe coming in oh i see a fence oh that's a epidermis oh that's a bsf that's a langerhans cell so i i invite you to do this a lot in your life also whatever studies you it is there in your head now try to relate to people around you and try to actually make stories around them and trust me you will never forget that now what are the chances that you will forget the bsf analogy what are the chances that you will forget the bus and the passenger and the bus depot analogy so the mellow side analogy is so easy to understand so what we know is analogies make things rememberable otherwise the biggest problem students have is they read and forget read and forget because they are not linking it to simple stories so my job has been on honestly all the time to try to link complex topics with some stories because stories have more retention remember the rabbit tortoise story we remember that from childhood because that story was so relatable and easy so that's why remember the power of small stories they always help you remember so much better got it right so this brings us bache to the end of the first session this brings us to the end of the first session so let's take a 15 minute break and then we come back